Hey guys, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, I want to talk about the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. So it's been almost uh, two months since the phone has been out. It got released in September 15th, 2017, and I've been using it so far for the last one and a half months, and uh, a little bit more than that. And uh, I just want to give you my impressions of what I have experienced so far. It has been my daily driver since day one. So the, the day that it came out, it became my daily driver because I am traditionally a fan of the Note series. And like I said, it's been a couple months now since it's been out. So I want to give you guys an impression of how I feel about the Note 8. And of course, I want to let you guys know really quickly that I'm going to be switching to the iPhone 10 for a little bit. So for the next two to three weeks, I will be using the iPhone 10 as my daily driver just so I can get a sensation of what it feels like to use the iPhone 10 uh, after switching to it from a Note 8. And I predict that I'm gonna go back to the Note 8, but you never know. But uh, my prediction is that I'm gonna go back to the Note 8 because that's what's been happening year after year after year. Anyway, let's dive in and talk about the Note 8. And just so you guys know, I have the black one. So it's got a black rear. And of course the front on all the Note 8s are black. And uh, that's the color I chose. I do wish I got the gold color because I do like. Let me click OK because I do like the uh, the gold color phones. But this one I got in black, and uh, it actually grew up on me, so I've been using it in this color. So the very first thing about the Note 8 that is absolutely stunning is something you probably heard over and over again. It's the display. It's a large and tall display. It spans almost the entire screen. It's got very thin bezels on both sides. It's 6.3 inches. It's super AMOLED. It's got great contrast. It is extremely sharp. So as far as displays are concerned, this is one of the top phones to have. And the fact that the display is so large uh, allows me to use the features built into the Note 8 uh, much more in, a, in an enhanced manner. So when it comes to multitasking, I can run two windows side by side. And if I'm watching YouTube video on one video and I'm using the calculator on the other window, it's very easy to perform that function as opposed to uh, screens that are slightly smaller. You can still do multitasking, but it simply does not give you as much uh, satisfaction as doing it on a large screen. And of course, the same thing applies when you're watching a movie or uh, viewing high resolution pictures on the screen. Watching a movie on this screen is a pleasure as is viewing pictures. So this phone has an extremely large display and it's actually very easy to hold. So if you don't have a case on it, one of those big thick protective cases, if you're holding it like this, it's very easy to hold and operate. So the size is right and the screen is extremely large. Now I will tell you that the phone is a little bit too tall for my taste but it's something that I'm willing to live with uh, because of everything the phone has to offer. Okay, so great to hold in your hands, a little bit too tall, but a fantastic screen. So everything works out in that instance. Now, the next thing I'm gonna switch to immediately is one of the biggest features of the Note 8, and that's the S Pen, okay? So a lot of people still don't understand the magic of the S Pen. A lot of people think it's just to take notes. Uh, it is to take notes. You can take amazing notes with this phone. Uh, you can actually do sketches with this phone. And believe me, if you have the patience and the skill for it, you can literally draw a masterpiece on your smartphone uh, using this pen. The other thing I like about this pen that a lot of people haven't mentioned is I actually like to navigate my S Pen, uh, I'm sorry, navigate my Note 8 using my S Pen. It just feels cool. It just gives me a sense of importance, especially if I'm doing something important. So I like to uh, 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 navigate the phone using the S Pen, which is not a problem at all. Okay, so that's number two thing that I like about the S Pen. And number three, uh, the S Pen has a menu that, that pops up when you hover the pen next to the screen and press that button on the S Pen. It brings up the Air Command menu. And the Air Command menu has a lot of functionality uh, that a lot of people don't understand how useful it is. Let me show you just one example. Actually, let me show you a couple examples of how I like to use the S Pen on a daily basis uh, using the Air Command menu. 
All right, so here's the Air Command menu. I'm gonna bring the S Pen close to the screen, tap that button, it brings up the S Pen menu. And as you can see, there's a bunch of shortcuts right here. Uh, the first thing I like over here is I can click on plus here and I can add more shortcuts. So it's all customizable. I can click this guy right here. It's gonna take me into the customization menu. And from here, I can either pick some S Pen features or I can pick a shortcut. So let's say I'm a, I use the calculator all the time. I can just tap it and now it's just sitting there on the corner for me to access at all times. So I can just go like this, boom, navigate the whole thing. I'm navigating the whole thing with the S Pen. I can click on this guy and I can start doing some calculations uh, equals blah, blah, blah. And there we go. So let's say I did a calculation and I want to share the number with a friend. I just want to show them the whole math of it, right? Uh, again, what I can do is I can bring up the Air Command menu and I can go to, for example, Smart Select. And then I can pick the kind of selection I want to make. Do I want to make a rectangular selection? Uh, do I want to make a free form selection? Or do I want to make an oval selection? Just, let's just pick the, uh, the oval one right here. So I can pick this area right here. Let's say I just want to share this area with my friend or anybody, a colleague. And then all I do is I can actually make some modifications to this guy. I can go to Draw. And I can just say, like, you know, pay attention right here. And then when I'm ready, I can go to uh, Save. And then I can share, pick that picture with anybody that I desire. So you can do this on any screen. If I'm in the map screen and I'm on a certain street and I'm trying to give directions to somebody, uh, let's say they don't have access to a high-end phone uh, and you want to give them a snapshot of where you are, again, you can bring up that thing, tap on Smart Select, right? Uh, let's do the rectangular this time. Select this area and just go like this. You know, I'm right here. And then I can uh, either save this or share this directly, or I can continue editing the whole thing. I can do whatever I want with this picture, right? So I can pick a different kind of tool and maybe uh, maybe highlight something right here. You know, make sure you're careful over here, whatever. Click save or share with my friend directly. So that's one of the functions of the S Pen that I use a lot. I always uh, pull up the command air command menu and I'm always using one of these guys. This one over here is just to create a note. Uh, this one is for screen right, so you can take a full uh, screenshot of the screen, and then you can start taking notes right on it, okay? And again, you have full access to the pen here. Uh, whatever kind of pen you wanna pick, whatever color you wanna pick, do what you have to do, and then save it or share it. And uh, let me just exit out of that one for a minute. Let's go back into the Air Command menu. You also have other things like the live message, the translation feature that allows you to translate words and paragraphs on any website from any language to another language. Now this one uses Google's database for translation. So it's got hundreds of languages and it's very accurate translations. So if I tap this for example, and let's say I go to the website, it's still floating up here, right? From here I can pick the language that is uh, from, and you can see all these languages. I can go to the language that is to, and I can just do a translation by hovering over uh, a word. So let me hover over images. Boom, I get the Turkish translation for that word. And if you want to translate paragraphs, you just tap on this icon here, and as you can see it says P. Now it's gonna be translating entire paragraphs. If you tap it one more time, it's just for uh, one word, okay? And when you're done with this, you exit out and you go back. And of course, there's much more over here. Uh, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description box below. Uh, I do have a video that covers all of these guys just in case you're interested. But this is just one aspect of the S Pen like I talked about. It can also, you can also take notes. So if I go to the, um, let me go over here, create a note. Now I can start taking notes, no problem, right? I can change, I can pick any pen I want here. I can change the size of that pen. Uh, I can use an eraser, so I can erase stuff. Um, absolutely fantastic, right? Let me uh, click this, that's the pencil. So if you wanna draw something, you can use the pencil. And of course, it's got uh, a lot of pressure sensitivity. So if you press lightly, it's gonna draw light. If you press hard, it's gonna draw harder, okay? So you can really get artistic with this thing. All right, I think that's enough uh, to demonstrate. Let's keep moving on. All right, so we talked about the S Pen, we talked about the display. And uh, now what I wanna talk about is uh, two things I don't like about the Note 8, uh, even though I can live with it. So no phone in this world is perfect. But 
in my opinion, the Note 8 is as close you can get to perfection as possible, uh, but it's not perfect. There are two things that I personally don't like that you may like, but I don't like them, but I would like to share them with you. And of course, the first one of those two is the placement of the fingerprint sensor right next uh, to the cameras. Okay, so there's a straight line here. You've got the cameras, you've got the flash, you've got the heart rate sensor, and then you've got the fingerprint sensor, which is very hard to reach when you're holding this tall phone. I really wish uh, they had placed their fingerprint sensor at, under the camera in the middle of the phone, somewhere right here, uh, where it is more natural for my fingers to fall. So if you look at the Pixel right here, here's the Google Pixel 2 XL. Uh, the fingerprint sensor is right here. So much more easier to reach. Instead of going all the way up here in the corner somewhere next to the camera, you go right here in the middle. It's a natural spot for the, uh, for the button to be placed at. Um, another thing is, design-wise, it simply looks more symmetrical if it was right here. So if the camera was on the top where it is right now, uh, and the fingerprint sensor was right here, it would simply look more symmetrical design-wise, and practically it would be more convenient. That would be a perfect location, and it would have brought this phone a little bit closer to perfection uh, than it already is. Hopefully next year they're going to be able to uh, integrate the technology of having the fingerprint sensor built in under the glass on the front display, which is a possibility they're working on. All right, so that's the one thing I do not like. There's one more thing I don't like. Let me talk about that right now. All right, so the final thing I don't like about the Note 8. Um, this might piss some people off, but I don't like the fact that it doesn't have stereo speakers, okay? So I'm one of those guys that rarely uses headphones, rarely. And uh, whenever I watch a video, uh, whenever I watch a movie on my Note, uh, I wish that the, the sound was simply better. And of course, because I own all the other phones on the market, uh, the, the quality difference is obvious. So the Pixel 2 XL right here has dual stereo speakers, uh, front firing speakers, and they sound so much better than the Note 8. The same thing with the iPhone 10. It's got dual stereo speakers, and they, they sound better than both the Pixel and the Note 8. So when I test these phones and I go back to this phone, I'm disappointed. Uh, hopefully that is also something that's going to be rectified. Uh, but let me make something very clear. The Note 8 is in fact my favorite phone of all the phones sitting in this office right here um, for many reasons. Uh, it may not have a perfectly placed fingerprint sensor. It may not have dual stereo speakers, but it's got a gorgeous display. It's got all the flagship specifications. It's got a great dual camera system. It's got, of course, the S Pen. S Pen by itself puts this phone on a higher level and gives you all kinds of uh, functionality, a new, whole new dimension of functionality on your phone. So even though I'm saying some negative things, I just want you guys to understand that I love this phone. And it's most likely gonna be my daily driver in a couple weeks after I'm done testing the iPhone 10. Now, I don't hate the iPhone 10. I like the iPhone 10. I like the iPhone 8. I like the iPhone 7. Uh, the only problem is, uh, even though I like the smoothness and I like the app ecosystem and that app-based environment on the iPhone, uh, it's very easy to use. I get bored. So when I get bored, I look for something that has a diversity of Android and uh, the Note, Note 8 has the diversity of Android. It's got extreme levels of customization, personalization on top of what Android already offers. Okay, so it's a very software rich smartphone. And S Pen is just an example of that rich software experience. All right, so basically that's what I want to talk about. Uh, great display, flagship specifications, S Pen features, the best market on the phone right now in my opinion. Uh, not a bad price. It's $950, but I feel like it's worth it. It's, uh, it's more worthy of that price than the iPhone. It's more worthy of that kind of price than the Pixel 2 XL which is almost $900 with the taxes for the base model, all right? So if, if you came to me right now and asked me, hey, Saki, what phone do you want, do you recommend that I buy today? I would say get the Note 8 above any other phone, all right? And that's it. So thank you for watching this video, guys. Uh, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. 
And of course, uh, if you do use Twitter or Instagram, make sure to follow me on both at Saki Tech Online. Have a fantastic day.